That's the nature of politics. It's not about logic. It's about circumstances. Being at the right place at the right time. The best example, perhaps, is Sri Lanka's new president, Ranil Vikramasinghe. The parliament has elected him to replace Gotabaya Rajapaksa. He will remain president until 2024. Not an acting president, not a caretaker, a full-fledged executive president. 134 out of Sri Lanka's 225 lawmakers voted for him. His nearest rival got 82 votes. Vikram Singhe addressed the parliament soon after the vote. He asked his country to unite and talk. Listen in. Now our divisions are over. We had 48 hours to be divided and we were divided. Now I ask all of you to unite and let's talk. I'm happy to start these talks with all of you from tomorrow. It's a fairy tale for Vikramasinghe. Absolutely no one saw this coming. In the 2020 parliamentary elections, Vikramasinghe actually lost his seat. He had to enter parliament as a national list MP, not nationalist, these are two words, national list MP. What does that mean? You see, Sri Lanka's parliament has two kinds of lawmakers. 196 MPs are elected directly by the people and 29 are national list MPs. They're nominated. Vikram Singh, he belonged to the second group. He lost the election, so he had to be nominated. He was pushed through the back door. Two years later, he is the president of Sri Lanka. Like I said, it's all about timing. When Gotabaya was looking for a prime minister, Vikram Singh fit the bill. He was non-controversial, politically powerless and reform-minded. When Gotabaya was toppled, Vikram Singh also promised to quit. He seemed genuine about stepping aside. But the presidency was too big to pass up. Vikram Singh did what politicians around the world do. He saw an opportunity and he pounced on it. The question is, what next? The mood on the ground is somber. The protesters were expecting major changes. Instead, they got Vikram Singh, a man who, according to a lot of them, sum up, sums up Sri Lanka's problematic establishment. He's a six-time prime minister. He's considered close to the Rajapaksas now. And he's backed by the ruling SLPP party. Also, he's tough on protesters. Just think about it. This is a man who lost his parliament election. His own constituents did not elect him. But now he's representing the entire country. So naturally, the protesters are not happy. They're planning to continue the demonstrations in Colombo. We won't back down. We won't let this be. We won't settle for any less. Because at the same time, this is exactly what we're fighting for. We're fighting to not settle for any less, but and to not be comfortable in the uncomfortable, but fight for what we deserve. And, and the people deserve to get their basic necessities. Vikram Singh's next move will be crucial. As acting president, he declared an emergency. He called the protesters fascists. That kind of attitude could lead to more backlash, more protests against him. So he needs to be more focused on two things especially, political reconciliation and economic revival. And the second one will take time, economic revival. Sri Lanka's talks with the IMF are nearing conclusion. Once a bailout agreement is reached, things will improve, hopefully. Sri Lanka can begin its long and painful recovery. But what about the political reconciliation? That is the big worry for Vikramasinghe. Most of his support came from SLPP lawmakers, from the party of the Rajapaksas. And we all know why they voted for him. You could call it revenge strategy. Let me explain. The protesters toppled the Rajapaksas and their cabinet. The opposition is sympathetic to them, the protesters. But Vikramasinghe is not. He is promising to crack down on them. So naturally, Rajapaksa's MPs voted for Vikram Singhe. And the reaction is on your screen. Demonstrations outside the presidential mansion. The last time this happened, the president had to flee the country. In fact, he's still on the run. Now the former president. How can Vikram Singhe avoid a repeat? by implementing political reforms. He may have been elected by Rajapaksa's party, but he needs to rise above politics. First of all, convene an all-party government. Second, begin work on curbing the president's powers and finally announce fresh elections. Not today or tomorrow, but maybe once the IMF bailout is here. Only a new mandate can diffuse tensions in Sri Lanka because right now the people have been left out. They had no say in this presidential election. Vikram Singhe has proven himself to be a great politician. He went from election defeat to president in two years straight. But can he be a great statesman? That will determine Sri Lanka's future. Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.